Society has taught most straight women to despise and fear the lesbian. There is this extraordinary myth that lesbians turn to one another because they cannot get the ultimate prize, a man. Heterosexuals believe that theirs are normal relationships, but there are no normal relationships, just relationships. And most relationships arise from social conditioning, both of women and men. Social pressures, not natural emotions. These words come to us from Britain's first openly lesbian, first openly LGBTQ plus MP, Maureen Calhoun, elected to the newly formed constituency of Northampton North in February 1974. Calhoun represented this seat till 1979, when Margaret Thatcher's Conservative Party swept to power. Although Calhoun's time in Parliament was brief, it was far from uneventful. When she was first elected, Maureen was married to the author and journalist Keith Calhoun, and the couple lived in Sussex with their three children. A year later, she met Barbara. Barbara Todd, co-editor of the lesbian magazine Sappho, had been asked to take part in the committee stage of the 1975 Sex Discrimination Act, along with other members of the Women's Rights Campaign and the Women in the Media's Anti-Sex Discrimination Action Group. Maureen and Barbara also got to work together on the Balance of the Sexes Bill, which Calhoun introduced to the House of Commons in 1975, which aimed to achieve equal representation of women and men in public bodies. By the time the House met to debate the second reading of the Balance of the Sexes Bill, I knew that Babs loved me, and she knew that I loved her, Maureen wrote in her autobiography. Shortly after this, Maureen came out to her family and in April 1976 moved in with Barbara and her two daughters. While the couple lived openly together, Calhoun did not publicly announce the relationship. She did, however, appeal to the Speaker to alter her title when being referred to in Parliament and its records wanting to be known as Ms. or simply Maureen Calhoun. Not long after holding a joint housewarming and birthday party for Barbara, a story about the couple's relationship broke in Nigel Dempster's gossip column in the Daily Mail. One of the party guests, it seemed, had been blackmailed for information about the couple's relationship. Soon their Hackney residents and Calhoun's constituency offices were besieged by journalists vying for photos. Colhoun's family, including her husband and 78-year-old mother, were also harangued by the press. In Westminster, opinions about Colhoun's sexuality, after her very public outing, were mixed. Privately, some parliamentary colleagues offered words of support, and she had a few loyal friends in the local party. But largely, there was no appetite for public demonstrations of support about same-sex relationships in Parliament or politics. In March the following year, Calhoun became aware that her local party planned to deselect her as the Labour Party candidate for the next general election. While the feminist press attributed this move to Calhoun's outing as a lesbian, the truth was more complex. Calhoun's feminist beliefs, support for women's rights to an abortion, and left-leaning politics were all seized upon by her critics in the Northampton branch of the Labour Party, as well as comments she had made in an interview with the journalist Chris Moncrief about a speech made by Enoch Powell. In this interview, she let off a great deal of steam about her disillusion with the Labour Party's lack of action in tackling racism, giving the impression she was sympathetic with Powell, an impression she quickly had to correct. In September 1977, Calhoun was deselected by her constituency party, but after appealing to the National Executive Committee, the decision was overturned. Colhoun subsequently stood as the Northampton North Labour Party candidate in the general election of 1979, but lost her seat to the Conservative candidate Anthony Marlow. Amidst the turbulence of her personal life and the threat of deselection, Colhoun maintained a fierce spirit in dealing with parliamentary business and political causes. She was undoubtedly a feminist and often found herself frustrated with what she deemed a lack of feminist integrity among her fellow female MPs, claiming that it was almost as if when women got the vote they died, remaining satisfied with the crumbs from the table which still belonged to men. She was pleased though when the national abortion campaign served to unite women in parliament in a way that other issues had seemed to fail. Colhoun campaigned 
on numerous issues to improve the lives of women and introduced the Protection of Prostitutes Bill to the Commons in 1979. She did not, however, limit herself to women's issues, involving herself in such issues as opposing the force feeding of prisoners and raising concerns about the environmental impact of the extraction of North Sea oil. She also called for an overhaul of the political system and called for more women's voices in Parliament and across all parliamentary business to fight the maleocracy. Maureen Calhoun's unapologetic individuality often left her at odds with other politicians and the subject of negative press. But as the first openly lesbian MP in the House of Commons and an outspoken feminist to boot, she paved the way for other lesbian and gay MPs to live openly and she contributed to the feminist cause in and outside of Parliament. <laughs> 